Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. Today I'm doing something a little bit different and something I want to do over the next couple of months, which is do uh, sort of race breakdowns after I've watched them. I've been meaning to do a Formula One ch channel for many years now, um, but really just haven't had the time. But what I thought I'd do is, is sort of post them and see what people think. This video is gonna be a 2022 season predictions. Um, obviously, we've got quite limited data of what the teams actually showed in the Bahrain testing over the sort of three days we had and some in, in Barcelona, which we couldn't watch, obviously. However, what I thought I'd do is, is dive into a few of my predictions for the next season, give you an idea of who I think is going to be competitive and maybe not so competitive in, in the next um, sort of year uh, of Formula One. Um, just a little bit of context. I've been a Formula One fan since um, or whenever I can remember. Um, as in probably in the late 90s um, and naturally been a Ferrari fan since so I've had like the benefit of the glory days of Ferrari um, and painstaking since 2008 at least um, it has been for us um, so that's the one thing I want to start with I do think whilst um, Ferrari um, aren't sure it's necessarily showing their car. It looks like they're running a low engine mode in in a majority of the barring practice. I do think they'll be contenders for the next year, and I'm going to put Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz in the contenders. Whilst I don't think Carlos Sainz, although he had a better season in his first year at Ferrari, I don't think he'll actually be um, the main driver at Ferrari, just because I think. Charles, Charles has had a lot longer at Ferrari, but he's also had a lot more mistakes happen to him there. And I think he's just going to rectify that by having consistent focused driving. Whereas I think whilst Carlos Sainz won't have that, I just think Charles will have a better experience in the car overall. Although I do think Sainz could potentially win a few races if they have a competitive car when it comes to uh, across the season. I think after the race sort of five, I think they say that there's actually going to be a general, general sort of idea of, of what each of the sort of contenders will um, be able to sort of deliver. I think um, Mick Schumacher, and uh, although it's Nikita Mazin been here, um, it'll be Mazepin, uh, will be replaced by Magnussen. I'll put Magnussen, not Mazepin, in the dark horse contenders. I think um, Mick Schumacher will be a midfield driver, but I think Mag Magnussen will actually be the one who overperforms the car surprisingly, just because he's walked into that seat after a year out, um, two years out of Formula One. Uh, yeah, no, one year out of Formula One. So I think it, it'll be impressive what he can deliver at least uh, in that season. I also think that the dark horse um, potentially will be um, Yuki Tsunoda. I think after his first year, I think he did so well in his previous um, F2 days and things like that. And I think he's a driver that just needs that confidence to really outperform uh, Gasly to some extent. But I think Gasly will be in that midfielder along with Yuki Tsunoda too. I think that um, Max Verstappen will be a contender. I think the Red Bull car definitely looks a lot stronger than uh, the Ferrari at the moment, just from some of the data, and a lot um, sort of higher pace, and their race pace looks also quite good uh, in comparison with the Mercedes. I think Lewis Hamilton will probably be a contender too, but I think George Russell will probably be a contender. There's also a dark horse. Um, oh, I've accidentally put the dark horse contenders here, um, but they... I don't think Magnussen will be. I think he'll just probably be uh, not necessarily able to compete that highly. Um, so I think Dark Horse contender will probably be George Russell there um, for the actual lead. So in terms of the bottom of the midfield, I think that Albon and Latifi will do better than they have with Williams overall. In terms of the, the constructor, Williams will be doing better. But I, at the same time, I don't think they'll be necessarily battling for this midfield here, which I know a lot of people will be surprised that Haas have actually put them there. But remember, Haas have probably had the most wind tunnel time with the new Ferrari engine. So I think that will make um, huge dividends. Bottas, I think, um, will probably be part of the midfield. Um, sorry, uh, hunting the midfield. I think their car seemed really unreliable in the testing and um, Zhao as well, I'll probably put down there. Um, and the McLaren side of stuff, I'm, I'm probably gonna say that they're gonna be top of the midfield this year with, um, same again with Lando um, and this sort of difficult, um, potentially difficult reliability issues as well. 
Perez, I think as well, Dark Horse Contender. The main reason is because it's a fresh season. He's gotten to know the car. Perez is a really uh, consistent driver, but also someone that can just deliver results. So I think it would be surprising. It, yeah, I mean, obviously they have some updates on Max's car before they have it on Perez's for the first race, I think it is. But I definitely think that Perez will be able to um, steal a couple of races from Max. And I think the team might endorse that. No, they won't endorse it. But I think he might push early on to try and get that statement in the team, um, hopefully, uh, to be able to spice things up a little bit. So I think that, uh, as I said, Alpine are probably going to be that one that does well or they don't do well. So I'm going to put them in the bottom of the midfield right now just because um, I don't think they'll necessarily be hunting for anything special. I'll also put um, Aston Martin in midfield because I'm not too sure uh, with them. Um, again, uh, Vettel not being able to race the first race anyway. Nico Hulkenberg being a replacement due to COVID. Daniel Ricciardo being in that first race too as well. Um, so they're what I think the drivers outlined looks like. Um, Ferrari mean dominating the contenders hopefully. George Russell potentially being that sort of dark horse contender and uh, a little sort of third place battle between uh, Verstappen and Hamilton I think would be quite common at races if Ferrari managed to bring the package that um, that I think they have uh, at least. Um, but really interesting sort of uh, be able to see whether Alpine have a stronger setup, uh, whether the McLarens are actually uh, stronger than they think. But this will be an interesting to look back in a year and see uh, what actually happened. Anyway, folks, a big thank you. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed these videos. Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments below. It'd be great to hear. And uh, let's uh, try to do a race review each weekend. Um, I'll try and do it before I, after I've calmed down, whether that's for a good reason or a bad reason. Um, I normally get quite tenacious while watching Formula 1, um, mainly because uh, of Ferrari. <laughs> um, but anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.